During the dark age of technology, as humanity began making its first forays into interstellar expansion and colonization, the long-standing debate as to whether or not the human race was truly alone within the galaxy would finally be answered, as first contact would eventually be established with a number of different Xenos species. While some of these early encounters with aliens would indeed prove to be peaceful, even fruitful in some cases, others would inevitably lead towards conflict and even outright war. In time, as humanity continued to spread across the vast expanse of the galaxy over the millennia, more and more Xenos races, both young and ancient alike, would be discovered and documented by exploratory fleets. Even during the dying days of the 41st millennium, the Imperium of Man is said to discover hundreds, if not thousands of new species with every passing year, and attempts will often be made to contain or simply purge them from existence should they prove to be a potential threat to mankind's dominion over the stars. Despite the Imperium's best efforts, there exist a number of Xenos races, most notably the Eldari, the Orcs, the Tyranids, the Necrons, and the Tau, which are simply far too powerful, resilient, or widespread to be so easily exterminated. Of these aforementioned races, two of the most notable are that of the Necrons and the Tau, which are commonly regarded to be the oldest and youngest of these major Xenos civilizations, respectively. The Necrons, originally known as the Necron Tear when they still sported bodies comprised of flesh and blood, were known to have once held sway over a significant portion of the galaxy, with their rise to prominence being speculated to have taken place hundreds of millions of years prior to the evolution of humanity. However, approximately 65 million years ago, during the later years of the War in Heaven, the Necron Tear after striking a bargain with the godlike entities known as the Catan, would undergo the process of biotransference, their organic forms being replaced with entirely new bodies created from living metal, with the race becoming known henceforth as the Necrons. By contrast, the Tau, when they were first discovered by the Imperium during late M35, were noted to be a primitive race of hunter-gatherers who had only recently learned how to create stone tools and master the use of fire. Despite their relative youth, the Tau would experience a period of rapid technological development and scientific advancement, and within just five to six thousand years would lay claim to their very own interstellar empire. And yet despite having supposedly evolved millions of years apart from one another, some have suggested that there is not only a connection between both the Necron Tear and the Tau, but that they might even be biologically related to one another. But is there any actual evidence to support such a seemingly outlandish claim? Initially such an idea would appear to be utterly impossible due in part to when both races were speculated to have first evolved and make their presence known throughout the galaxy. However, because the Necron Tear had, at the peak of their civilization, amassed a vast empire that spanned across the entire galaxy, some have suggested that the Tau could in fact be the potential descendants of ancient Necron Tear colonists who had simply degraded into a more technologically and sociologically primitive state. Such an idea is in itself not entirely unprecedented. For many of the worlds that have been settled by humanity during the Dark Age of Technology would also experience varying degrees of technological and societal degeneration, regressing to a state where they would come to more closely resemble Iron Age, Bronze Age, or even Stone Age civilizations. As such, the idea that the tower descended from a Necron tier colony that had managed to somehow avoid the biotransference process does initially seem somewhat feasible. In addition, there is also the fact that both the Tau and the Necron Tear are said to share similarly short lifespans, which some have suggested could be a possible sign of the two races sporting a shared biological heritage. A typical Tau, for instance, as detailed within the novel Farsight Crisis of Faith, will live on average for around 40 years before succumbing to the effects of old age. While the exact lifespan of the Necron Tear prior to the events of the biotransference process remains unknown, the 9th edition Necron Codex does state that it was nonetheless fairly short. 
Not only this, but some have claimed that the reason behind the Tau Empire's rapid technological development was due to the fact that the race had managed to uncover and subsequently reverse engineer long forgotten examples of ancient Necrontier technology. Although there is, admittedly, little in the way of actual evidence to support this particular notion. While the idea of the Tau being the remnants of a long lost Necrontier colony would indeed appear to be a fairly interesting one, there exist a number of issues with this particular hypothesis, most notably those regarding the physiological differences demonstrated by the two races. While the original organic appearance of the Necrontier currently remains unknown, a potential clue regarding their anatomy may lie within the bodies of modern Necrons. Despite the myriad of different forms demonstrated by the various Necron constructs, the majority of Necrons, such as rank and file Necron warriors, Pharons, and Overlords, are known to sport bodies that are highly reminiscent of mechanical skeletons. Because of this, it's reasonable to assume that such forms were not adopted through mere happenstance and coincidence, but are in fact somewhat based upon the original skeletal structure of the Necron tier themselves. If this were indeed the case, then there exist a substantial number of physiological discrepancies which would initially appear to make it impossible for the Tau to be descended from the Necron tier. The first of which is due to the number of digits found upon the hands of each race. A typical Necron construct is shown to have five digits on each hand, four fingers and an opposable thumb, whereas the hands of the average Tau only appear to sport four digits three fingers and an opposable thumb. Another difference is found within the legs of the two races, as the Tau appear to sport a digitigrade or possibly even angular grade stance, standing upon a set of large hoof-like toes as opposed to the entire sole of the foot, whereas the Necrons by contrast demonstrate a more human-like plantigrade stance. The final major morphological difference between the Tau and the Necrons lies within the facial and cranial structures of both races. As mentioned earlier, the physical appearance of the average Necron is noted to be highly evocative of a robotic skeleton, with even their very faces being reminiscent of an exposed, albeit stylized, human skull. If the heads of such constructs are indeed based upon the original skulls of the Necron tier, then judging by the size and shape of their nasal cavities, which are also noted to be somewhat similar to those of humans, Eldari, and even orcs, this would suggest that a typical Necron tier sported a nose-like structure upon their face, similar to that of the other three aforementioned races. The idea that the Necron tier had distinct nose-like structures upon their faces is loosely supported by the appearance sported by a number of Kitan. When first contact was established with the Kitan, the Necron tier would construct physical bodies to house the essences of such powerful beings which were forged to resemble the gods that the Necron tier themselves worshipped. Since a number of Kitan, such as the Nightbringer and Deceiver are known to have distinct noses, this, in conjunction with the knowledge that their forms were created to serve as a visual representation of their gods, would appear to strongly imply that the Necron tier themselves also had noses or nose-like facial structures. By contrast, the Tau, somewhat uniquely amongst the major races of the galaxy, are known to lack any sort of pronounced nose-like structure upon their faces, with their skulls instead sporting a singular nasal cavity, one which is also noted to be far larger than those of most other humanoid races. In addition, the nasal cavities of the Tau also serve as visual indicators of sexual dimorphism within the species, although whether or not the differing characteristics demonstrated by male and female Tau are fully reflected within their skeletal structures, or if they are simply produced by unique compositions of soft tissue, remains somewhat unclear. In either case, assuming that the robotic bodies of the Necrons are indeed based upon their original anatomy, then the sheer number of discrepancies between Tau and Necron physiology would initially appear to make it highly unlikely for the two species to be in any way related to one another. After all, even if a lost colony of Necron tier began to undertake a radically different evolutionary path during their supposed isolation, one would imagine that they would have still retained a certain number of biological traits from their ancestors. Such an idea isn't entirely unfounded, as the Eldari, for example, despite becoming a spacefaring race over 65 million years ago, are believed to have remained more or less unchanged from an evolutionary perspective, 
with what little changes that have occurred over the eons being relatively minor at best. Even within a race such as humanity, which has given rise to a multitude of abhuman strains over the millennia, such as ogrins, ratlings, and squats, the various human descended species still retain a number of biological traits from their ancestors, with many still boasting a recognisably human appearance, albeit one with often exaggerated proportions, such as by being far taller, bulkier, shorter, spindlier, or squatter. Admittedly, however, there are a small number of abhuman strains, such as Beastmen and Scalies, which diverge from an evolutionary standpoint to such an extreme degree that it is difficult to believe that humanity could have ever spawned such monstrosities, even if they do still retain a number of human-like traits. However, many of these more bestial abhuman strains were believed to have only come into existence as a result of extreme levels of genetic degradation mutation, or even chaotic corruption, and as such are often considered from an evolutionary standpoint to be the exception as opposed to the rule. As such, even if the Tau are indeed the result of extreme evolutionary divergence, one would imagine that some trace of their past heritage would indeed be detectable, such as a vestigial forefinger within the skeletal structures of their hands, similar to how many species of whale retain vestigial legs from their terrestrial ancestors. In either case, while it may ultimately seem unlikely for the Tau to be in any way related to the Necron tier, such an idea will nonetheless remain an entertaining and captivating one. What do you think? Leave a comment below, and thanks for watching.